Hello and welcome. Well, our special guest today doesn't need much of an introduction. He is one of Australia's most popular actors and beloved faces on Australian screens. Now, he has long been a popular face on TV with starring roles in Home and Away, House Husbands and Underbelly, just to name a few. And he's even recently featured on the cover of Australian Men's Health magazine, if you don't mind. Now, for the past month, or for the past year, I'm sorry, of course, he's undergone a complete transformation of mind and body on an inspirational health and wellness journey. Now, he's also Australian Organic Awareness Month Ambassador, and we are thrilled to welcome Lincoln Lewis. Thanks for joining us. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Really good. Really good. How are you doing? I'm just really excited to be chatting with you. Now, yeah, I understand likewise. since you've been um, on your health and wellness journey amongst many changes, you've lost is it over 10 kilograms since last year? How much in total have you yeah, lost? Yeah, well, uh, when I first started from, from day one of that men's health transformation, I was at about 90 kilos. And um, that's, the, that's sort of the heaviest I've ever been. But mentally, I was as, as bad as I've ever been. Um, emotionally, very much like my cup was empty. So, um, but yeah, physically, I started at about 90 kilos. And um, by the end of the transformation, so officially, I, um, I'd lost... 12 and I remember doing the weigh in about two days before we did a shoot and I'd lost uh, 12 kilos in the space of um, 12 weeks but then in in the like on the actual shoot day I weighed myself and I think it was sort of another sort of 2.5 kilos lighter than that so I think That's I finished crazy. at about yeah so it was, it was it was in the mid to low 70s oh no I think it might have been mid yeah no mid 70s or something like that yeah so anyway so a lot wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um yeah it, it was it was crazy but like more than that I, I I felt good. I was my, my mind was good. My like what I always sort of tell people when they talk about that kind of stuff is the physical transformation or any kind of anything physically that is, is out there. That's what people can see. But internally, that's what I felt. And that's what yeah. I knew where the biggest change was. Yeah. Well, look, congratulations <clears throat> on all you've achieved. It's really an inspirational story that really is sure to motivate and, and inspire anyone watching and listening this for sure. So you've got to be really happy with yourself. And, and secondly, yeah. of course, you're, you're looking great shape. So, and I bet you feel fantastic too, huh? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that was the thing that, um, that I've, I've changed the most is just it, like, lifestyle is is not just one thing it's not just sort of okay make this this one different thing i'm going to do every day it's it's a constant thing it's like going to the gym you need to continuously keep working on yourself and and your, your thoughts the way you the way you approach every single habit because for me the habits were the hardest thing to change and so once i put those things in place that was that was a cool thing so how i'm how i'm eating is a lot better i'm eating a lot more um, a, a lot healthier, a lot less processed shit. Mind you, I still do treat myself, but um, <laughs> you can have a balance. I, I'm, yeah, exactly right. We're all human. Yeah. <laughs> you got to live right, but, but still, exactly. it's more of the good stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just just uh, getting outside a lot, and and which you know, obviously, we we're, we're just having a quick chat before we jumped on, and um, with with everything to do with COVID, I think it's one of those things where just how light side and get some fair and when you are able to interact with people, how lucky we are to do things like that. So the things that we, not to say we take for granted, but we're very used to in everyday life, such as being able to walk outside anytime we want to and just go for a walk or go to the beach or go for a run. A lot of that had, has had to be scaled back. And so when we do get that opportunity, it's like just take every second you can and make it all count. A hundred percent. And you've got a busy few weeks coming up too, don't you, with Australian Organic Awareness Month uh, in September yeah. as this year's yes. ambassador, which is exciting. So can you tell us a little bit about that? That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was I was really very fortunate that um, Australian Organics approached uh, me and, and asked me to be their ambassador. So um, yeah, in, in the lead up, we've been doing a lot of filming and be going to a lot of organic producers and uh, that we're all we're going to be putting out through the span of September, which is Australian Organic Awareness Month. Now, the reason that we're doing this or that that Australian Organics have have created Organic Awareness Month is because Australia is the only developed country in the world that doesn't have a governing body about the use of the word organic yeah. so the basically to break that down if you were to go into a shop and you see a lot of packaging because a lot of people are really in this in this mindset and you can probably hear my dog in the background a little poodle barking around um <laughs> you, you probably see a lot of packages which says organic and that is fantastic because a lot of people want to look after themselves and and whatnot but we don't have a regulating body surrounding the use of the term organic so if you go to the shops and you see the Bud logo, which like the, a certification logo, that means it has met the standard required to use the term organic. But if it's anything other than that, 
it, you, you can't be certain of what percentage is actually organic. You could actually have a very low percentage of organic products and the rest is, is the, the very, you know, the normal kind of stuff, which mind you, isn't like putting toxic, toxic in your body, but in the instance of wanting to look after yourself, supporting the local producers and manufacturers, which have done the hard work to make sure that they are giving the organic product or meeting the standard of what is organic. That's what you want to really be looking for. So that's what we're going to be putting out is to look for the certified logo and also to just talk about the progress that I think, we're, we're fingers across, hopefully either by this year or next year, um, we will have a regulating body surrounding the use of the term organic. And, but yeah, whether it's whether it's that food, cosmetics, because not only what we're putting in our in our bodies, but also what we're putting on our bodies. It's um, yeah, when you want to look after yourself, it, you know, you want to make sure you're doing it right. So that yeah. is that is the whole point around doing Australian Organic Awareness Month. Awesome. And I've, I've got a heap of stuff I want to ask you about that later on in the chat, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about, I guess, the change and everything that you went through. Um, and, and in saying that, I guess when someone embarks on such a, like a monumental change in their life, there has to be, I guess, an internal shift that takes place towards, you know, positivity for both their mind and their body. So I'd love to know initially, you know, how challenging was it for you to make that initial sort of shift in general? Um, yeah, look, I, I, I think it's just like anything, getting started is the hardest part. Um, yeah, you definitely. know, if you say if you say you're gonna if you say you're gonna go to the gym, it's just it's getting up and getting out the front door, like uh, or going for a run. It's just getting your stuff and getting going. And once you once you get that momentum, it's you know, you, you can gradually build on that. But so when it comes to something like, you know, your mental and emotional state, that's that's also hard to get moving because your physical state has been neglected for so long like it, nothing nothing is a singularity everything everything is connected so yeah um when your mind isn't right your motivation is is not not any everything good and that's going to sort mindset. of totally the the mind is the most important thing and i know we put a lot of emphasis on everything we see these days on the exterior so like a, you know whether it's how you how you how, how we look how our hair is and how our body looks and all these kinds of things but if your mind isn't right, nothing's going to work. Like, um, yeah, it's the most I, important thing. I couldn't agree with you anymore. And I guess, you know, with everything that's been going through, the stress of COVID has really led to many people living, I guess, totally. unhealthier lifestyles than, than, than what they're just generally used to, you know, subconsciously, I think choosing to eat comfort eating and processed junk food that has that, you know, the initial feel good factor and pick me up. Um, however, in the end, of course, it increase, it just increases the amount of acid in our bodies and it just leads to long-term poorer health and a bit of a downward yeah. spiral, which people probably don't even realize that they're, they're on as well um so i just love to know you know what are some of the surefire signs that someone would feel if they were on that unhealthy spiral um that they maybe haven't sort of noticed that they're on and what would be i guess your advice for the first step um you know what can you suggest that they they do initially just to make that positive change as you were just saying what yeah yeah well i think first and foremost you're absolutely right like a lot like the the um, even just seeing the statistics of the suicide rate that's that's went up since the start of COVID. So a lot of different people in a lot of different areas that have been in lockdown, stuff like that, it's been affecting a lot of people. So um, for anyone watching, um, you know, if just, you know, for you, for yourself, for anyone around you, like it's, it's, you're not going through anything alone. Um, and, and you do notice uh, a difference. And, and the thing is, is like the fact that our routine, our life routine has been so, so dramatically halted it's, you know, everything, you know, you can't go out, you can't sort of socialize. And we're, we're a socially interactive species. You know, we're, we, we like to be around people. We like to yeah. communicate. We like to, you know, whether it's touch, whether it's talk, whether it's just be around, whatever it may be, um, we, that routine is being stopped. And, and then on top of that, a lot of people can't exercise, which for me is a lot of my outlet and, um, and like talking, interacting and exercises are my, my outlets. So when those things are getting stopped, you already feel out of routine, but then you're working from home. Your home is your place of peace and relaxation and you get to eat and enjoy after a hard day's work. So there a lot, for a lot of people, your home is now your office. So you're having to restructure what is your, your, your energy space. So, uh, it's it's actually quite easy to be in that time to be comfort eating and stuff like that because that's what that's what your time back at home is is to chill out mm -hmm. so you're then having to not only deal with your routine being stopped but you're having to readjust your routine while kind of figuring as you go so for anyone yeah, like you know don't beat yourself up and i think that's that's a big sort of thing i want to stress is like for a lot of people don't sort of if, you know a it's lot of people a difficult will, time it's difficult for, for for everyone so yeah so you know just just sort of i think the first step to anything is acknowledging the space that you're in 
Yeah. Um, and, and for, uh, like from my own experiences, which, you know, I'm I, like, um, that's, that's all I have to draw on is, is, you know, for advice to give is that when you're in a space, it's, um, it is quite hard to pull yourself out of it because again, mentally can be one thing, but then it links to your emotional motivational side, which then can also connect to your physical side because you'll be eating to try and give yourself that little bit of a perk up. But then you're like, for me, when I was eating shit to give myself a little bit of a sugar high, I'd feel crappy about the sugar and the crap that I was eating. And I'd be like, Oh, well, I'm going to go to the gym. But then by the time I'd really get the motivation to go, the sugar high wear off and I'd feel quite sluggish and I'd go, I'm just going to sit down for a bit and I'd sit on my phone. And Is that what prompted you to start I'd... the health and wellness journey? Just how you felt physically? Like... Uh, no, the physical was, was definitely probably the last thing. Um, it was obviously the, the worst because everyone could see it. Um, that was the last thing. And that's the kind of the thing when you notice the change physically is usually what prompts us to make the change because Mentally, we're so over so many generations, we've been so accustomed to go, oh, whatever, just push it to the side. Who cares? Let's just catch up with some mates or do this or I'll think about this or watch them, whatever it may be. And we push it aside instead of actually sitting down and trying to figure out what what that is in our own mindset and why we're feeling what we're feeling or why we're doing what we're doing. And and then it leads to your emotional side. And then ends up totally physically. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just start feeling pretty shitty about yourself. And again, because not, not being able to confront whatever over time. We don't want to talk to anyone because one internalize everything. So, totally. Because for so long we sit there going, I don't want to be a burden on anyone. I don't want to be able to drag someone else's day down because they're probably I having can a deal with this. Day and my my... I'm strong enough. Yeah, can, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you're like, oh stuff. And they're like and, and also, and here's here's another thing is while it is good to have perspective to go, look, there are other people in different places, different countries, different states, different cities, whatever, and, and going through all different things. So that person may have lost their entire family and something and 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 you so you go i oh, therefore i can't feel the way that i'm feeling because it's not as bad as what may be in that country or whatever it is and while that is good to have that kind of perspective you got to remember that everything is relative to you as an individual 100 percent. acknowledge what, how you're feeling what gets you down may not be exactly what gets me down, but what gets me down may not be exactly what gets you down so everything is to us as an individual and You've got to acknowledge that because if you're not thinking about that you're pushing aside you're creating a disconnection with yourself and Christ, we're the only vessel that we have in this life. So you've got to make sure that you have a good connection Love with that. yourself mentally, emotionally, physically, everything works in sync. So acknowledge that and go, you know what I do. It is good to keep that perspective, but also feel what you need to feel. And that way you can start to realize, okay, that's how I'm going to get past it. So that when it happens next time, you know, the tools or you've been there before and you can start moving forward at a quicker pace. And I guarantee you, it doesn't, it's not to say it gets easier, but when you have the tools, it, 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 it sort of quickens that, that progress. So yeah, I, and, and when I to back to when you were talking about um, why it in, in every aspect. So mentally I was, I was gone emotionally, I was gone physically, I was, I was in no good shape at all. But as soon as I stepped out of my bedroom door, I'd always be smiling. Like I'd always be trying to put on that thing because I'm a very sort of jumpy kind of person naturally anyway like i don't even drink coffee or anything but i'm just very energetic oh, and couldn't imagine you so if I'm never, i'd explode <laughs> no you would holy crap <laughs> now, so, so so you went through the low point it was in 2019 um but i get look overall I get, it just takes a lot of courage to overcome adversity well, especially when it comes to overcome it overcoming stuff like depression and so what were the first signs you weren't feeling right and so what did you do then to help improve just your mental well-being was it changing your diet was it exercising more was it just that that the well, physical changes that you started to to make yeah so 2019 like um was was kind of the time when uh so early last year was when i actually did something about it and what i realized was probably easily a year earlier than that um it it was just something I never told anyone. Um, you just talk went through it on your own. It. Yeah. And, and, and it's just one of those things, again, that everyone will most likely do that will always try and just not say anything. <clears throat> and, and as an individual, you know, when your routine's a bit off, you know, it's like, like we can have a bad day or a bad week. That's fine. But when you realize that it's a consistent pattern happening with everything that you do, you know, that something needs to be sort of thought out and addressed. And, again, getting started is the hardest thing. So, yes. and, and it took me a long time to get, to get started with. And, and it just sort of happened by chance, which now has led into me completely shifting the way I approach these things. And that was when we had a boys weekend. So there was myself, men's health editor, Scotty Henderson, um, my mate, Scott Tweedy, who, who was host of a show called The Loop at the time, which is just a morning music video yep. show, but now he's in the States. Um, 
uh, Matty J, who used to be one of the Bachelor Boys, and um, a fellow called Johnny McMahon, who heads up a, a, a social media group called Boss Hunting. And anyway, so the five of us, we, we did a, uh, an appearance at the, the golf that weekend and then just spent the day and the night chilling out at the Goldie, went and had a big feed that night and all just shot the shit for a while. And anyway, I was sitting next to Scotty and we were talking away and and, and it's one of those things where you don't, you, you open up, but only very joking or where I opened up only very jokingly. I would approach it just through humor because that's, that's sometimes my coping mechanism with, with things, but I, I like to take a shitty joke anyway. But um, I said something uh, regarding just my weight and, and Scotty was like, Oh mate, you're all right. And, and you know, was, all these dudes were hell fit. And so I was just like, no, nah, mate, like, you know, I made some sort of a joke about it. And then, he kind of opened up this channel and he asked me about it later on. And he's just like, so, so you kind of were giving the yourself releasing a bit of, of the shit, vessel, you know? isn't it? Just taking a little bit of the pressure out type of thing. Yeah. Like sometimes we can, in. yeah. Sometimes we can address our little elephant in the room through our own methods. And for me, that's, that's through a bit of self-deprecating humor, like putting, not really putting yourself down, but making a joke about it so that you're like, I've addressed it, whatever. Ha 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 joke, move on. But, um, and then Scotty later on, when we were having a bit of a chat about motivation, what it like, what, what inspires us, what our goals are, what our aspirations are, who motivates us, all that kind of stuff. We talk about everything like that. And then, uh, and I said to him that I'd only just recently watched the Creed uh, sequel movie, which is uh, mm -hmm. uh, yep. the, the boxing, the boxing. Movie. Yep. And I, Yeah. And, and I said, oh, I just watched that sequel in the cinemas uh, like a couple of weeks earlier. I said, dude, that's the first time I, I as soon as I left that, I went straight to the gym. So that's the first time I really just went to the gym properly in ages. And he's like, oh, really? Yeah, okay. I said, yeah, man, I just just really can't be bothered doing anything lately. And he's just like, so so why is that? You said, yeah, like you, you seem like a few things are this and that. And, we, and over the next half an hour, we started really opening up. And then he just listened. He didn't, he didn't just sort of hear me and not listen to me, which sometimes can, we can, we can have the people, it's like, you're hearing me, but are you really listening to me? Mm -hmm. And, and he was listening and he was genuinely interested. And, um, and we started talking about everything and, um, and then just through chance, he just sort of, I, like I talked about Michael B. Jordan being a real inspiration because oh, he was one about cover boys. And I just thought, I know I saw that article and he just goes, dude, so you do, he got in sick shape for that. And, um, and he just said, mate, we should get you on the cover one day. And I said, oh, mate, you yeah, know, this Love it. Goes. So you had a goal, you get... so you had something to work towards, like you said. Yeah, this was a by chance thing. So, yeah. And then he just, and, and that was one of those things where he just said, if you ever get in shape, we'll chuck you on the cover. And I said, mate, I tell you what, like, if, if, uh, if we ever put a plan in place to do a complete overhaul, you got yourself a deal. And he just goes, we actually haven't done a transformation issue in a while. Would you actually be down for that? And I said, yeah, and he goes, dude, it's not easy. Don't get me wrong. This is like literally putting the brakes on on the highway, doing a U-bolt and speeding down the other way. This is completely like a 180. But if you, anyway, long story short, just said, yeah, you know what? You Let's get, do it. Congratulations because, though. The transformation yeah. is, but it's not just a transformation in the physical. It's of, of the mental as well. It's so, complete. Yeah. Like to put it into a thing, I, I wanted to rebuild myself as a human being because I, mm -hmm. I had nothing to offer myself, let alone anyone else for, for a, a period of time. Now I was just, I was existing, but I wasn't living. You know, I had something similar happen in my life where I, um, when I was about 15, just before I turned 16, about six weeks before I was diagnosed with MS, but I had a dance performance on my 16th birthday because similar to you, you had a goal, you had the goal of um, then working towards the, the, the cover shoot for, for the Met for the magazine for me I, I wanted to dance at this particular performance I mean I was completely paralyzed I had to learn how to walk and just wow. coordination the whole thing but I find that when people have a set goal in front of them um, that pushes them forward and it's a, de it's a even if, if there is a deadline or impending date these things can actually help um, but it's, it's, it's really um, really important what you were just saying that at the right time that you felt um, comfortable speaking to a confided friend just in a one, one in one conversation and that you felt heard that's the most important thing also that they that they were genuinely really wanting to listen um, and to be able to help and it, not necessarily by chance because it was like your subconscious it was just like you know I, I, I'm I, I want to sort of move forward from this this situation I'm in um, 
And I guess, you know, getting back to COVID for a moment too, you know, thankfully one of the positive things that's come out of COVID is removing the stigma of mental health um, and depression in general. And it's much more widely acceptable and spoken about now and becoming a little bit of a buzzword recently. However, it's anything but, and it's very real as we know. So just really briefly, I mean, how for anyone watching and listening that may, may be in a sort of darker place at the moment due to the struggles and the challenges of COVID, how would you best describe, um, I guess, what you sort of feel when you're sort of suffering with depression? Um, so, so anyone watching and listening, especially parents, so they can identify those similar feelings of anxiety or depression, just so they can maybe go, well, actually, it's happening to me, you know? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, so firstly, like, you know, um, yeah, I'm I, like not being anything qualified to be able to diagnose anyone, but, 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 but real life um, every, every, yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, Every, everything is going to be unique to you as an individual and you will notice when you're off routine. You'll notice when you're feeling off or things aren't flowing that the way that you're used to them flowing, um, thinking the way that you used to think or just your general spark in life is feeling quite dim or some people may just feel that their spark is completely extinguished. And um, you know that within yourself, like, we do know when something's wrong. Our intuition, our gut is very rarely wrong. Um, whether you're interacting with someone, you go, something's, my gut's telling me something about that person or yourself, you know, when something's off and it's, it's, it's up to us as an individual to go. I, I like finding that way to be in tune with yourself can just take a little extra time because we're so used to just going through the motions these days of life is so crazy that we do put a lot of things aside. So noticing when, yourself your own patterns your own rhythm your own thought process your like anything about your own mindset or routine can be a little bit off off balance you'll notice that and that's that time to have that little bit of a a thought um and 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 i think from once you sort of realize that the best things i can always say are surround yourself with people who who feel like sunlight you know people who make you feel supported um, who make you feel, who make you remember your worth um, and who love you unconditionally. Because I guarantee you every single person on this planet has those people. And although, and, and I will say this, when we're all going through our tough times and everything like that, it is very hard to see that. And, and uh, when, when I was going through all my shit, um, I, I, I said it like this because I've got like, to me, my mum is the most incredible human on the entire planet. And um, she is the greatest thing in the world. And even though she's all like, she's always there giving love, support unconditionally all the time. My sister, my brother, my dad, my family, everyone is, we've got a very close knit family. But when you're going through shit in your own mind, I say like, I was actually just looking around trying to find like if I had one in the bin or something like that. Um, think of like an empty toilet roll. You know what I mean? Just the cardboard thing. And you close that eye, you're looking through that. Everything around you is all the good stuff happening in your life. Now, looking like that, you know, it's there but you can't see it. You know, it's there. You know, there are people around you that love and support you. But when you're going through those shit times, you can't see it uh, mm -hmm. because all you can see is, is just what's going on. And it's a very hard place to get out of. So what you got to remember is you keep those people around you. Um, Cause yeah, I'd want to be in my room when people were over, but then when people were gone, I'd hate being alone. It was a weird, weird shitty thing. So one keep those around you, and and a very very cool thing that uh, Sam Webb, who started up the Men's Men's Wealth Foundation, Living dot org, um, said he he said one thing to remember is is sometimes you don't need a problem solver, you don't. Sometimes we do, but sometimes it's just good to be able to talk to someone. You don't need them to give a resolution, or as a listener, sometimes we don't need to give the solution. We may want to have the solution, but sometimes it's just good to sit there with someone and allow them to speak their mind to say whatever they want to say and just get it out without any, this is what you should do. This is what you need to do. Or, Hey, that releasing of the valve, just the pressure, just to release that pressure, just to get it out. Take the lid off, just take that lid off and let yep. them pour it all out and just, just let them do it and just let them know that they're in a safe zone. And that can truly honestly be the difference. Um, I'm not to say that that's like, for me, that the proof is in the pudding with that kind of stuff, but also, um, there's a couple of little other things, which, you know, it depends if you want to sort of take an initiative without sort of making that massive leap or whatever. Um, always, always remember the small steps because like we were just saying before, there's a goal in mind, right? You know, you have that goal. So where for me, it was my, it was getting rebuilding myself. And that was the end goal. Um, wasn't necessarily a photo shoot, but it was the transformation. But 
remember to always congratulate yourself and be proud of the, every single step you take because celebrate the everything wins. is everything every decision you make will have that ripple effect so if yeah. you decide you're going to go <clears throat> i want to eat healthy today if you're going to have something good for breakfast and you didn't have some shit that you're used to having be proud of yourself for that i know it's not going on oh, throw a party but or anything like that but celebrate that and then yes. when you actually look at something in the pantry later on you go that i'm used to eating that crap I'm going to go have like a, like a big glass of water and maybe some, some almonds or something like that, that, you know, what I'm going to have that instead, instead of like the sugar cravings giving, be proud of that. Once you get to the end of the day going, I'd actually didn't fault for today. Be proud of that to because everything is going to happen. Everything yeah. is going to be, that was a good day. And that good day will lead into another good day. And before you know it, if you stick onto that on a decision by decision basis, you can go that whole week. I actually did really well for myself. And that, can actually give you motivation and confidence in your own self to go, I have willpower. To build on build and build. Well, positivity builds positivity, doesn't it? And it's, exactly. it's as corny as the saying is, it, it's, it's about the journey, not the destination, which we've heard so many times, but it is true. You've got to give yourself true. That, that sort of pat on the back throughout the way to keep you sort of going. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and when you do that, you can be proud of yourself going, no one's going to get me out of this but myself. Yeah. And every decision you make, go, I made that decision. Yeah. I made that decision for myself. Good, like... Yes. Awesome. And then by the end of the day, you go, I did that. That was me. Like yeah. I, it, it, you know, I just said no to that. Awesome. So yeah, sorry to cut you off. <laughs> no, no. All good. No, because look, we know, and as you mentioned at the start, you're really passionate about your health and fitness and the great outdoors um, and the environment as well, which we haven't even sort of touched on yet, but you know, in general, so what did you incorporate into your everyday life, I guess, to, to be able to help make that transition? It was, it was the exercise. It was a food. It was just like holistically right, right throughout everything that you were doing. Is that everything. right? So yeah, 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 yeah. So um everything was was I, I did a 180. Um so completely sort of we, we sat down with uh with uh sorry John John Castano, Jonathan Castano, who was the trainer. Um Jordan Hartley was the nutritionist and um and we sat down and we just we nutted it all out and so we just worked out a diet which said link, you know, we're get, we're cutting we're cutting sugars out completely as as much as humanly possible, no sugars, no processed carbohydrates. Um, we're going to have, we're going to, your body's are not going to like it for the first week or two because you're going to have some must have been really withdrawals. tough. Oh my goodness. It was. And so, um, we didn't, I didn't deprive myself of nutrients. So I made sure that I was getting sustained, but everything I was putting in was stuff that my body could just, I was eating for sustenance, not for comfort mm -hmm. and, um, and making sure that I was continuously drinking a lot of water, like a lot of water to flush everything out. And, um, and it's things like that. And plus, if you drink a lot of water, you feel quite full anyway. So it was helping me out in every way. So we did that. But then um, I made sure as not to get distracted by anything. Like, so I didn't, I, I made sure that my focus on everything. So if I had mates gone, oh, let's hang out, Savi, when I was in Sydney, I knew, I, I just said, mate, I'm, I'm really so I'm so I'm busy. I, I like, this is, this is my reason <laughs> for being here. We'll, we'll catch up at another time. <laughs> but the moment but I'm, on, I'm on this journey of health and wellness and I can't just sort of sit there and eat pizza and, and watch the game. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So I'd hang out with mates that were doing that, but, it, and that's actually like a little cool training thing for your own mind is just to be like, nah, I'm sweet. And when you actually say, nah, like, so that you actually feel a little bit better in your own self because Empowered. you know, you're sticking to your guns. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. so, I mean, after going through that period of depression, you decided to turn your life around and overhaul, I guess, your nutrition and your fitness, which involved including, you know, as you just say, more wholesome, organic produce. So can you maybe just tell us about this and what examples you can give to any <clears throat> parent watching, I guess, of the natural, unprocessed um, health food that you started eating that really helped with that change? Is it sort of raw, yeah. raw foods? I mean, overall, I mean, yeah, where did you start? Well, yeah, uh, basically we just made sure to incorporate just a lot of, a lot of veg and a lot of protein and, and the less processed, the better. So like we cooked it well, we cooked it in, um, a lot of, yeah, a lot of organic, uh, produce, um, and, and everything like that. But we just made sure to have as, as everything I was eating as little processed stuff, the better. And, um, yes. so, and, and look, um, I mean Honestly, I, you know, going back to it, there's no scientific definitive proof, but again, for each person that can say testament to this kind of stuff, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. And how I was feeling was, was the thing that no one else could see, but I knew within myself and my mental clarity was through the roof. Um, I, I was, I was feeling clearer. I was thinking clearer. Um, I noticed the whites in my eyes were returning. Like I was, I was a lot of the time I was very bloodshot and, and stuff like that. So I could, the whites in my eyes were returning. Um, so, so I just felt more energetic. 
So, because I was going to ask you, I mean, how would you best describe the benefits of organic produce? And it's exactly what you're just saying. It's just overall, just your energy levels um, lifted, mental clarity, um, yep. holistically, your mind, body, spirit, you sort of just lifted. Is that the best way to describe it? Yeah, every, it? every, uh, yeah, and totally every aspect. And so like, you know, I keep going back to it like that everything is connected. So like you just said, hey, um, mentally, I was feeling clearer and I was thinking clearer. Um, emotionally, I was, I, I don't know, I just didn't feel... I didn't feel weirdly drained all the time and, and lethargic and stuff like that. I actually just, I, I, I started to feel a bit happier and I, and whether that's a, like, you know, a mixture of my own energy levels, but also not putting shit in stuff in me that was making me feel really sluggish. sluggish. But then, yeah. 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 And then physically so, you could, I could just see that my, my, like I was looking a lot brighter and my skin was clearing up. I, I guess just I, in, in wrapping this up, you know, I mean, for anyone that's wanting to, I guess, overhaul their life, um, you know, what, what, what advice would you have for anyone that's potentially sort of resisting change? Yeah. Um, well, I think first, you know, you need to, to, it all comes down to you as an individual. So like, yeah, for resisting change, that's, that's a, that's a cool, that's a cool one because yeah, for the longest time, you know, I, I did that and um, because you kind of can brush it off and stuff like that. And I think the thing to keep in mind, okay. Um, a couple of little things just always to keep in mind is I can't, I've said it before, but I can't stress enough the importance of having a support group around you. That's, that's most important. Just uh, first and foremost with anything in life, just always have a, a good group of people around you. Um, but when it comes to you as, as you know, an individual, um, what do they say? Um, the, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Um, and, and remember that it's just that first step. You don't need to look at the top of the mountain to go, crap that's where i need to be um just look at the first step if you one day just decide hey i'm i'm gonna go buy some broccoli to add on my dinner tonight that's great good on you um if you all of a sudden go i had one less chocolate bar today because i want to just kind of cut back good on you like we you need to remember that you don't need to go cold turkey overnight and if you want to make a change fantastic like every single day try and just try and do something better that your that your future self will thank you for and um acknowledge and everything the, that we the challenges we're going through at the moment too as you mentioned absolutely. it is a difficult time already yeah it is it is so you know we got to like think of everything that we do now is going to have a future impact on us later and so you know with all like just for all the organic stuff they're doing stuff that's not only going to be good for all the consumers but ultimately for the sustainability of the land in general um and so everything that we do just, you know, do something that your future self is going to thank you for, but make your day by making someone else's day. That's a really cool, uh, that's one of my favorite quotes. And and have you ever noticed if you will pass someone, you never met them before, you never will see them again, but you just make eye contact, you smile, nod, something inside you makes you want to smile. Or if you're at a shop and someone wishes you a good day, thank you, you too. It's just it's something, there's all these little things that I love to just kind of think about in my days or whatever, which is just do something that will make you smile try and do even one little good thing for yourself each and every day. And that can lead on because routine is the hardest thing to get out of that can be so easy to fall into. So if you're going to set yourself a routine, make it a good one because getting out of a, a bad routine is such a hard mugger of a thing to do. So if you're going to set these little things over a couple of days, it starts to become routine over a week. It develops into a bit more and over time it actually just becomes a part of you, but that is starts with a single step. So that's all I can say is have the, beautiful support base around you that are always going to be there for you that you can have a laugh with but also if you need to oh i'm leaning i'm leaning it's like i got you all right great thank you um you can talk to all that kind of stuff do something good for yourself and make your day by making someone else's day i think they're my little little things you're the best look no, no doubt what you've shared will inspire so many lives towards making you know positive changes uh, in their lives towards a healthier lifestyle um for their mind body and soul and we're just so grateful for your time today lincoln it's just been an no, absolute pleasure <laughs> they know thank you for for doing like thank you for having me on and, and just for helping to put out such a beautiful message i really appreciate the time and and for everyone tuning in thank you very much for your time and for listening hopefully i haven't chewed your ear off too much but yeah, all the best, everyone, and be there for each other and, and be good to yourself, be good to those around you and just sending you guys all lots of love. Thanks so much, Link. You take care, stay safe. All right, all the best. You too. Yeah. All right, big love. Bye. Yeah, bye. <laughs>